by the winter sea. Until King Arthur's table, man by man, had fallen in lionese about their lord, King Arthur. Very nice, dear. I hadn't finished. But there's no need to put on a posh accent just because you're speaking poetry. It didn't seem right in my own voice. Well, it sounded pretty silly in that one. Still, at least you could be heard at the back, which is more than could be said for the other boys. Now, I'll pay you 35 shillings a week to play as cast. To play as cast? You mean you can't offer me a definite part? Oh, I'm afraid not, dear. But we usually have to double up, so you could find yourself playing lots of parts. Some with lines, some non-speaking. Non-speaking? Now, rehearsals start on Monday, and we open in Sunderland on the 21st. It's a three-month tour. Northern Circuit, one or two dates in Scotland. I didn't really want to go on tour. I have already worked in the London theatre. But you can't expect just to stay in London. Not if you want to make a living in this business. I'm sorry. I'm a West End hacktor. I can't accept an out-of-town engagement at the moment. Good morning. Who do you think you are, Charlie? You've been out of work for months. You're living off my savings. You turned down 35 bob a week. She's truly not a beginner, Sid. But I've never worked with Saints Me or Mr Gillette. Oh, I see. So you're a star now, are you? Shut up. Look, don't you understand? All we've got left is eight pounds of my saving. When that runs out, we're on the streets like this lot, unless one of us gets a job. Oh, something will turn up. Always does. Something did turn up, mate, only you turned it down. Look, my worry is, what are we going to tell Ma, eh? Ma, how do you feel? Sydney at last. I seem to have been waiting for ages. Waiting? Waiting for what? It's nearly tea time, isn't it? Well, Ma, hang on, Ma. Why do you think you're going? Why, well, home, of course. What a silly question. Did the doctor say you could? I don't need any doctors. Charlie, do take that sulky expression off your face. Have you two had another row? But look at her, doctor. She looks completely normal. It's true she's made a recovery of sorts in the past year, but... Uh... Will she ever be properly well again? No. Mr. Chaplin, your mother has been medically certified as insane. Now, she may have long periods where she appears to be perfectly normal, but I'm afraid they'll come and go without warning. She wants to go home. So I believe. Well, uh, she's of no danger to anyone, so I see no reason why not. It's wonderful, Doctor. Oh, provided... You understand that she's the child now, not you. Try not to worry her with responsibility. And where are you living? A basement room off Killington Road. Well, what she needs is light and air. I'm afraid a damp basement in London would be no good for her. No good at all. I think it would be better if she stayed here for the time being. We'll find a way. Can't bring her back here again. I'll take the next job that comes up. I promise. We might not be able to wait that long. There's an amateur's night down at the Foresters on Friday. I thought I'd give a vague one from Oliver Twist. Show him I can do a character part. Oh, only an amateur night, eh? But suppose one of your fans sees you, and wouldn't they think you've fallen on hard times? Well, there's always a few managers in. A professional like me would stand out in a place like that. Mm. Here, I've got a better idea. Why don't we do a double act? What? Look, this is routine I used to do on the ship's concerts. Add the passengers in stitches. I used to play as drunk waiter, spilling soup over everyone and doing pratfalls. Well, what do I do? You play the customer getting more and more angry because you ain't getting any food. Mm. Look, stop thinking of yourself, Charlie. It's for Ma we're doing this. Ah! Ah! Come in, my boy, come in. We are very glad to see you, Oliver Berry. Dodger! Take off the sausages and throw it up near the fire for Oliver. Ah, you are looking at the pocket handkerchiefs, eh, my dear? 
They're all a good many, ain't they? We just look them out ready for the rush. Hey, boys. Well, you think I beat you. And take your request to your commanders. Especially the Dodgers, my dear. Be a great man himself one of these days. And make you one too. You take a lesson by him. Professional. Even pros have got to please the customers, son. If they don't like your act, you're off. Stan, you're on. Here. You're next. On you go. All oh, right. Don't worry, lad. This lot don't know out about talent. amateur night. You were terrible last night, Charlie. Just terrible. Oh, thanks a lot. You wouldn't want me to lie to you, would you? You know what I think? I think you're getting your own back, because I wouldn't do a double act with you. Oh, you really think that? You really think I enjoyed watching you get booed off stage? No. You're right. I was terrible. It's just that... Oh, I just hope there weren't any managers there. Well, if there were, they probably wouldn't have recognised you. Mm. Anyway, you can pretend it was another kid with the same name. A job. A job. One of us needs a job. I've got one. You have? Yeah. We're in a telegraph office. And that's not all. I've rented an apartment in Glenshaw Mansions. Glenshaw Mansions? Can we afford it? We can afford it for a month, because I've already paid the rent in advance. Mm. Well, I'd better do something, or else I'll end up like that. Oh, Sid, it's lovely. So, madam is satisfied with our accommodation? The nicest place we've ever had. <laughs> and now we're back together again. Everything's going to be all right. That's not all, Ma. Ta-da! My old machine! Oh, you got it out of pawn. Not that you have to use it, Ma. Only if you want to. Only if you're bored doing nothing. You must be in the money. I didn't know Telegraph boys were so well paid. Oh. Hello, Mrs. Chaplin. Haven't seen you for ages. I was the seaside. Seaside? Is chest trouble all cleared up? Chest trouble? Well, that's why you went away, Sid said. To get some nice sea air. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, I I'm quite better now, thank you. Good. Well, what can I do for you? I wanted... Yes? I'd forgotten. Of course. Sid's suit. Yes. That's right, Sid's suit. Sid's suit. Here we are. Oh, love, will you tell him I won't be able to allow him anything on this in the future? He's very frayed. It's very worn. Oh, it doesn't matter. It'll look all right on the stage. Good. There'll be 12 and 6. Twelve and six. Twelve and six. I haven't got any money. How many pictures did you sell today, Charlie? Three small ones, one big one with the framework and everything. How much was that altogether then? 
doesn't matter really. I still only get one and triple today, no matter how much I sell. Can't ask Mr. Bell for more money. It was very nice of him to give you the job in the first place. I don't want to work for Mr. Bell all the time, Mark. I could buy my own camera and take my own pictures. I sell them just like he does, and I keep all the money. For a start, you've got to find the money to buy the camera. Where would that come from? Maybe Sid would lend it to me. No, Charlie. Sid's already keeping us in this place. You can't ask him for more. <sighs> I'm bound to get a job in the theatre sooner or later. Something's got to come up. Listen to this one, Mark. Wife, have you got a good memory for faces? Husband, yeah, I've got a good memory for faces. Wife, that's good, cos I just broke your saving mirror. Where did that come from? Sid's joke book. Some of them are really good. No, that's not one of the good ones. Mm. Well, listen to this. This is blood. Oh, no! What is it, Mark? The needle! I've broken the needle! Well, haven't you got another one? No! And this is for Mrs Johnson. She wants it first thing in the morning. Oh, Charlie, what am I going to do? Well, can't you do it by hand? <laughs> I'll never finish it. <laughs> Well, then she'll have just have to wait, then, won't she? We don't need the money that badly. <laughs> we do. I've got to get Sid's suit out of box. He can't keep wearing his uniform at night. I'm getting it back. I'm getting it back. Oh, I need some rest. Stop working so hard. <gasps> Hello, Sid. You look all done in. Yeah. Three telegrams came in just as I was leaving. The other boys have gone home, so they give them to me. Well, your supper's in the kitchen, love. Oh, great. It's fish cakes. You like them? Thanks, Ma. <laughs> I'm too tired to eat. I think I'll just go to bed. See, you know that double act you were talking about? I think we ought to give it a go. You do? Ah, oh, that's wonderful. May I take your order, sir? You're drunk. Drunk? I take exception to that. Great exception. And I take exception to being served by a drunk waiter. Oh, I see. You'd rather be served by a drunk coal miner, would you? No need for incense now. No, no, no. no. <laughs> May I take your order, sir? You're drunk. Drunk, I take exception, so that's great exception. And I take exception to being served by a drunk waiter. Oh, I see. You'd rather be served. Thank you. Next, please. May I take your order, sir? You're drunk. Drunk? I take exception to that. Great exception. And I take exception to being served by a drunk. No luck, eh? Never mind. Tomorrow's another day. Yeah, have some supper. What's this? Fish cakes. Fishmonger around the corner is ever so nice. He let me have those half price because they were last week's leftovers. I'm uh, not very hungry, Ma. I think I'll just have some bread and dripping. You're doing no such thing, young man. With all these auditions you're doing, you need proper food. Uh, she's right, Charlie. Come on, eat up. Is that wrong with that sketch, you know? Yeah, I know. Seemed right in rehearsal, but on stage it just isn't funny. If we'd have been doing it at the Foresters, we'd have been looked off after the first couple of the lines. Mm. Do it for me. What, now? Well, as soon as you've finished eating. All right. <sighs> May I take your order, sir? You're drunk. Drunk? I take exception to that. Great exception. I take great exception to being served by a drunk waiter. Oh, I see. You'd rather be served by a drunk coal miner, would you? No need for insolence now. What do you recommend? Well, for someone on your size, how about a piece of shortbread? Now you're playing the wrong parts. What? It's the wrong way round. Sid, you should be playing the customer, and Charlie should be playing the waiter. Well, when I've done it on the ship, I've got loads of laughs. The sketch was an absolute riot. Who did you play it with? The purser. And how old was he? 35. Well, there you are, you see. It's only funny if the customer is old and more dignified, and the waiter's the young and cheeky one. Right. All right, let's do it the other way round. Don't just take my word, love. Ask your father. He should be home soon. Yeah. What do you think, Harry? He's dead boring, that is. You're not going to get people into the theatre to watch that load of old rubbish. I'm not trying to get them in. I'm trying to get them out. You are? There's too many folks staying in the theatre all day. They're hiding in the toilet under the seats. I don't know where. 
All I do know is I'm losing money on the last performance. <laughs> if you show that sort of thing, Fred, they won't bother coming at all. That's why I'm putting them on it in between shows. Oh, well, that'll chase them out right enough. Ah. You don't think they'll catch on either, then? Who's going to pay a real bath to watch a train coming into a station? A bit cheaper to buy a platform ticket. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right, yeah. Now, look, I've got a couple of young lads auditioning. Chaffinch or Chapman or something. Oh, here we are, yeah. Chaplin. You come in. One moment, sir. Oh, you clumsy oaf. You spilled soup all over my suit. Soup all over your suit, sir? That's right, and I demand to speak to the manager. I'm sorry. He's not here at the moment. He's just popped across the road to have his dinner. You mean he doesn't eat here? No, he doesn't like the service. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to do about my suit? There's nothing I can do, sir. But what you need is a tailor. <laughs> I've never been so insulted in all my life. Pick up my napkin. It's your napkin. You pick it up. <gasps> <laughs> Did you do that? Did I do what? Kick me in the you-know-where. I wouldn't dream of kicking you in the you-know-where. Not the I-know-where, the you-know-where. <laughs> Let's get this straight. Are we talking about my you-know-where or your I-know-where? We're talking about my posterior. Oh, I see. And where's that? There. Oh, there. <laughs> you did it again. Hey. Kick me in the you-know-what. I thought you said it was the you-know-where. Same thing. Rubbish. How can a you-know-what be the same thing as a you-know-where? <laughs> <laughs> Shall I tell Mr. Carl where I finished it? Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. This is where we go into a short oh, the sketch is all right. Needs a rewrite, of course, but I might be able to make something out of it. I meant the kids. The kids? <laughs> Come on, Fred, they're nothing but a couple of street Arabs. I was a street Arab once, Harry. And where would you be without me, eh? Well done, lads. Now come on down to the stalls. That's Mr. Harry Weldon. He's my leading comedian. I want to buy the sketch for him. Buy it for him? Yeah. How about ten quid for it? That's a fair price. I'm sorry, the sketch isn't for sale. Not without us. Shut up, Charlie. What are you saying, Mr. Carney? You can't offer us a job. Not as comedians, no. I mean, I think you're very promising, but you need more experience. I've had plenty of experience. Ever done comedy? No, but if you're a proper actor, you should be able to play any part. Nonsense. Actors and comedians. The different breeds. And an actor has no place in the music hall. Except perhaps as a straight man. That's not a bad idea. You what? We need a couple of straight men for that new uh, football sketch. What about these two? Don't be ridiculous, Fred. I'm not working with a couple of untrained ragamuffins. You need that sketch, don't you, eh? A three-month run at a joint salary of six pounds per week. What do you say, lads, eh? Straight men won't... Well, thank you, Mr Carno. We accept. There you are, Mr Arnold. Twelve and six, just like you asked for. Oh, I can see that, Mrs Chaplin. What's it for? Why, Sid's suit, of course. I got a new needle for the machine. Mrs Taylor from the Salvation Army. Ever such a nice lady. So I managed to finish the skirt for Mrs Johnson after all. Good. Where's the ticket, Mrs Chaplin? You need a ticket to redeem the suit. Oh, yes. It's somewhere. But you know Sid's suit, Mr Arnold. You know me. There's the money. What else do you need? I need the suit. There you are. Sid redeemed it himself. He got some money in advance from Mr Carno after the audition. He must have told you. I expect you've forgotten all the excitement. Little bit of muzzle. Good luck after all the tourists and trouble. You in Glenshaw Mansions, the boys with Fred Carno. The next thing we know, Lily Arley will be back on the stage herself. I don't feel very well, Mr. Arnold. Could I wait here till my husband gets back? Mr. Fagin. What? Don't you remember me, lad? That night at Forrester's, I was next on after you. Oh, of course, Stan. Oh, it's Stan Laurel. <laughs> well, it's Jefferson, actually. Laurel's my stage name. This is my brother, Sid. Pleased to meet you, Stan. All right. Well, uh, I'm glad to see you came back from the grave. <laughs> you know, Stan was the only one who had a kind word to say for me that night. I'll never forget that. 
And I'll never forget the laughs he got. I could have killed him. <laughs> hey, what are you doing in the show, Stan? Oh, well, I don't know yet. But Carlos promised me he'd let me do my silhouette act. That's why he hired me. Oh, great. We're meant to be Harry Weldon straight men. Oh, he'll grind you into the stage, that man. What do you mean? Well, listen, take my advice. Keep an eye on Weldon. See what he's doing, then do the opposite. It's a good gag. You sure? Oh, you can't be sure of anything in this business, but uh, the audience will tell you soon enough. Come on, Charlie, you're on in a minute. I think it'll work. I'll use it then. What are you talking about? Don't you try no funny business with Weldon. me throwing it. Oh, I shouldn't worry about him. After all, none of the players do. Stick to the script, Chaplin. Oh, stick to the script, eh? right here. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call that policeman and turn you in. <laughs> hey, who's she Who's she for? Hello, hello, hello. What seems to be the problem here, then? This bloke. He tried to bribe me to let goals in. How could I offer him a bribe? I haven't any money. Look. Well, he's right. How can he offer you a bribe if he hasn't any money? I don't know, but he did. Rubbish. <laughs> this man just stole ten bob from me. His manager obviously doesn't pay him enough. <laughs> Make him turn out his pockets. Right, son, do as he says. You can explain down the station, lad. You're coming with me. Never what about the game? Let's play with ten men. Come along now. Where is he? <laughs> So last time you were a fool out of me. You pig-headed, cloth-eared idiot. I warned you not to try anything funny with Weldon. Got a big laugh, didn't it? That's not the point. Of course it is. We're comedians. No, we ain't. We're straight men. That's what Mr Carno booked us as. Don't mean we can't get any laughs. Means we can't get his laughs. He's a star. Oh, it'll be all right. He'll soon get used to it. Look, Charlie Chaplin, you got a sick mother at home and this job's all we got. Weldon gets us booted out, we're back in the streets and Ma's back in the asylum, right? Sorry, Sid. Didn't think of it like that. Listen, Charlie, you was good tonight. Real funny. I just wish you'd pick your moments better, that's all. Let's just hope Weldon's calmed down a bit. What's the matter? Did you see the football sketch? Yes. I thought it went rather well. You must be blind. It was completely ruined by that little urchin you saddled me with. He got a lot of laughs. 
straight men aren't supposed to get laughs. And I'm not playing second fiddle to some snotty-nosed little kid. I want him paid off, Fred. I want him fired. See these playbills? Fred Carno presents, it says. I don't see anything about Ali Weldon. No. Well, let me make it a bit easier for you, shall I? There's no room for the two of us in your company. Either that lad goes, or I do. <laughs> 